conic sections are special shapes that have been explored and investigated for hundreds if not thousands of years. The name comes from the idea that you can take a cone, or in this case a sort of double cone, a cone that's on top of an identical cone that's reflected underneath, and then you can slice it with a plane or a flat line, and then the intersection of your plane and the cone produces a family of interesting curves. They're related to each other in all sorts of interesting ways, and they're also curves that appear in nature in all sorts of places. So to begin with, what I'd like you to do is try to visualize doing this for yourself, and the animation hopefully will help you a little bit. Pause the video and see how many different shapes you can imagine producing by slicing through a double cone like this with a plane of this sort. OK, I have a few common ones for you, and there may also be a few other more obscure ones that appear as sort of edge cases. But these are the main conics that have a special name, circle, ellipse, parabola, and hyperbola. You might well have come across them in slightly different forms. A circle you've dealt with before, you should be pretty familiar with. X squared add Y squared equals one is the classic example, but you could have different circles, put them in different places or vary their radius. In terms of the different properties, moving them around, isn't particularly interesting to us in this topic. So typically, we'll try to keep our shapes centered in uh, consistent, predictable places. But we are interested in what happens when you distort them in different ways. The next shape is a bit more interesting, the ellipse. There are lots of different types of ellipse. There's only ever one circle, if you think about ignoring the fact that you can zoom in and out. But there are lots of ellipses because depending on how it's been distorted, how extreme the angle is, how much it's been stretched in one direction versus another, you can get all sorts of different sorts of shapes. You can think of an ellipse as looking at a circle from a funny angle or as stretching a circle in different directions by different amounts, or indeed by cutting a cone in the way that we've done here. A parabola is a shape that you will have come across in um, different forms. The most common will be a y equals x squared type curve. Um, and the hyperbola you've also come across, but probably um, not by that name necessarily. You will have seen that whenever you draw the graph of y equals 1 over x. It's a weird shape that's got two different disjoint sections. So there's two separate branches to a hyperbola. There are also a few other conics that you might have thought of or come across when you were trying to visualize cutting that cone with the plane. Um, one that you might end up with is a single point like if you decide to cut the cone right at the point where the two cones meet. Or perhaps you can think of what happens when the line is completely vertical and also goes through that central point, in which case you just get a pair of straight lines. Each of those can be thought of as a special case, but it's a degenerate version of either a circle or a hyperbola or something. So generally speaking, we focus on the three of these that are most interesting the ellipse, the parabola, and the hyperbola. And they're known as the conic sections. As I say, they have lots in common with each other. There are all sorts of interesting properties algebraically, but also geometrically. We're going to begin by looking at the parabola and see if we can identify some interesting properties straight away about this shape. First property I want to investigate is something clever that involves a point and a line. I want to try to work out which curve I end up with if I follow this particular rule. I want all the points that are the same distance from a particular point, S in this case, and a particular line, a vertical line I've chosen in this particular example, um, labeled D. So you can try this for yourself. I'd encourage you to pause the video and have a little play. If you draw yourself a set of axes, then you can use exactly the same point and line that I've used, but you could also just do this with any point and then a line nearby and see how easy or difficult it might be to produce points that satisfy this requirement. I've, I've given you one for starters. The origin is equidistant from the point and the line. But if you move up to say zero one, suddenly the distance from the point is root two, which is about 1.4, but the distance to the line is still only one because the shortest route to a line is always gonna be along the perpendicular. In which case, 
it's always going to be a perfectly horizontal journey from any point to that vertical line if you want the shortest route whereas the shortest route from the point to s is going to be directly from the point to s have a go at marking a few points see if you can figure out what shape you're likely to get see if you can answer the question will the shape join up with itself again and if so where might that happen if not why not all right once you've given that a try have a look at the shape we produce this might be just zooming in too much on an ellipse but if you think about it if there was another point where this curve was going to cross the x-axis it would have to be a point that was the same distance from the line as it is from the point s but anywhere else on the positive x-axis is going to be closer to s than it is to the line because it's going to be a distance of something to s and a distance of that same something plus two all the way to d so there is nowhere else on the positive x-axis where this curve will meet up and a similar logic means there's not going to be any bits of the curve attached or unattached on the other side of the line because then it will be too close to the line and therefore couldn't be the same distance from the line as it is from the point this point is known as the focus and because the shape we're looking at is in fact a parabola it's not an ellipse it's not a hyperbola it is a single branch but it doesn't join up with itself this is called a parabola and a parabola can be defined uniquely by giving the location of its focus a focal point and something called a directrix which determines the direction it directs the the direction of the parabola if you like so that line is known as the directrix of the parabola the point is known as the focus and a parabola can be defined as the set of all points p for which the distance from p to s is identical to the distance from p to d it's time we rolled our sleeves up and did a bit of maths we're going to think about what it means for a point to be equidistant from d and s it's not enough just to draw a few points and talk vaguely about how it kind of looks like a quadratic we're going to see if we can prove it so you're going to have a go firstly at finding a general expression for the distance from any point p which we're going to keep in terms of x and y to this particular point s which is the point one zero you're going to need a little bit of pythagoras to describe this create for yourself an expression involving x and y that corresponds to the distance from p to s the next question i'll have for you what is the distance from p to d what is the direct perpendicular distance from the point p to the vertical line d that should be a slightly nicer expression the next thing you're going to do is set up an equation using the fact that i need all the points p for which the distance from p to s is the same as the distance from p to d try to simplify it as much as you can you'll find for instance that you've got some square roots involved try squaring both sides see if you can tidy things up a little bit and as an added bonus if you've done this and it's worked fine for you with the point s at one zero and the directrix at x equals minus one try generalizing by zooming out and imagining that s is anywhere you like on the x-axis anywhere on the positive x-axis so let's call it a zero where a is just some positive value that doesn't have to be one and then you could move the directrix the same distance to the left the reason we try to keep them equidistant from the origin is so that the origin is always going to form part of our parabola it'll make our maths just a little bit nicer so pause have a go at these three questions maybe try the bonus problem if you've got time and then continue the video we'll see if you get the same results as me so for the first bit i want the distance between p and s i'm going to use a bit of pythagoras the horizontal distance is just going to be the gap between the x coordinates so that'll be x and one so x minus one square that and that gives me the square of the horizontal distance between p and s similarly with the vertical distance y and zero and then i find the square root of the sum of the squares of those distances i can write that slightly more simply but not very much that's about as good as i can get for ps pd is going to be a bit nicer pd is a perfectly horizontal journey because the shortest route from a point to a line is along the perpendicular and in this case you can either think of this as the sum of the x coordinate and the value one 
because that's how far P is from the y-axis and how far D is from the y-axis on the other side. Or you could do a similar thing to what we did when we were working out the gap between P and S horizontally and just subtract the coordinates. So X is the X coordinate of P. Negative one is the X coordinate of the point on D that we're going to. So X take away negative one gives me the size of the gap. It's just X plus one. And then we set the two equal to each other. We end up with this equation, which is going to be much easier to work with if we deal with that square root. So let's square both sides. And of course, the next thing to work with is we've got something involving y squared, but also there's going to be some x squareds on both sides if we expand out these brackets. So let's do that. Expand out the brackets, do a little bit of tidying, and you should find that quite a few of these terms cancel out. And at the end, the simplest version you can write this in is actually y squared equals 4x. So it really is a parabola. We were correct. It's not an ellipse, it's not a hyperbola, but it is a conic section and it's this particular parabola. The first thing to notice is, of course, you'd have to turn your screen at right angles to where it is now in order for it to look like a classic y equals x squared kind of graph, because it's not. It's more like an x equals y squared kind of graph. It's this way around for historical reasons and because when we look at the ellipse and the hyperbola, we like to have vertical directrices and um, focal points on the x-axis just for simple we keep things as similar as we can but it's absolutely the same type of curve as any quadratic you've ever seen apart from the fact that we've got it written in this slightly weird form where we have y squared and x instead of x squared and y parabolas like the other conic sections have all sorts of fascinating properties some of which you'll go on to prove some of which you will use routinely in a level further maths questions and some of which you might never come across. But this is one that I find particularly pleasant. If you've ever done any curve stitching, that process where you algorithmically follow a particular um, routine sequence, joining points to other points, gradually fleshing out a graph with straight lines to the point where the lines seem to produce some kind of curve, then the curve you've generated is in fact a parabola. This is a little tricky to prove, but there's a really, really nice approach for proving that this is true. It involves thinking about which points could be produced by a line of this form and which ones couldn't. But the shape you produce really is a parabola. And depending on where you choose to draw your lines, you can produce a bunch of different possible parabolas. Another nice way to do this, if you don't want to draw lots of lines, is to do a folding version. So you can make this for yourself very easily. If you get a bit of A4 paper or something, make a mark perhaps a third of the way in from one of the longer sides and then just fold the paper so that the left hand side edge comes to the point. And you'll realize when you do this, there's actually lots of ways this can happen. So, for instance, if you fold it so that the left hand side edge comes to that point at quite a steep angle, you might get this line. If you fold it at a more shallow angle, you might get this line. And you could gradually continue folding more and more different places, produce a bunch of different lines. If you're patient enough and you do enough folding, what you should find is you gradually end up approaching this kind of thing. If you look carefully at the bits that have been folded and the bits that haven't, you generate for yourself a parabolic curve. This is just one interesting property of the parabola. One of the other fascinating things is to do with how it reflects things. There's a reason the focus is called the focus, and there's a reason we have such a thing as parabolic mirrors and parabolic satellite dishes. It's all to do with how they can be used to collect and focus a signal, or how the focal point can be used as a transmitter to make sure a signal goes in a consistent direction.